Are you looking for a turbo boost in your VR experience? In this video, I'm going to show you what the OpenXR Toolkit is, what Open Composite is, how to set them up, and how to get the most out of your VR headset. Towards the end of the video, I'll show you a quick demo of a set of course Competizione, an AMS2 at night in the wet to show you how they perform. So today I'm going to explain how we can use OpenXR and the OpenXR Toolkit, which leverages OpenXR to improve the performance of games and also how we can get games that were built for Steam VR to work with OpenXR using Open Composite. So I realized there was a lot of opens there, but uh, I think it's useful to have a background of what it is we're actually doing and how these technologies work together. So I'll just quickly go over how you can set these up and then I'll show you what the OpenXR Toolkit is. So the OpenXR Toolkit is essentially a third party application. I believe it's maintained by at least four different developers, one of which I think's a Microsoft developer. However, this is built in their own time and isn't officially uh, supported by Microsoft. They also have their own dedicated Discord. So if there's any detailed questions about X, OpenXR, I'll put a link to their Discord in the description below and also a link to this GitHub page so you can have a look at the features. But the, the main benefits of using the OpenXR toolkit is if you're using a game that supports OpenXR, you'll be able to leverage some of the things that are built into this toolkit. The main thing being upscaling, sharpening and foveated rendering. It also does support eye tracking as well if the headset has eye tracking so you can combine foveated rendering with eye tracking. And if you're not sure what foveated rendering is, I'll just give a real quick explanation. So what foveated rendering does, it eases the workload on the GPU by rendering the scene at different resolutions. So the centerpiece of the image is the sharpest. And as you go further out into your peripheral vision, there becomes a lower resolution. So what this allows you to do is get the most performance out of a lower end GPU. So that's one of the key features of using OpenXR Toolkit along with upscaling. Built into this toolkit, there are two upscalers. Actually, there's three now, but I'll just cover the two that are in this documentation. So, so there is Fidelity FSR support, and there's also NVIDIA's Image Scaling NIS. So that's slightly different from DLSS, but it is another type of scaler. And I believe as of the OpenVR Toolkit 1.2.1, there's CAS has been added as well. Now, the final bit of technology I just wanted to cover off before we get going is Open Composite. And as I was explaining at the start of the video, SteamVR has its own open protocol or own API called OpenVR. And the problem with this is if you want to play games like Dirt Rally, on the Reverb G2 that don't natively support OpenVR, you have to install the SteamVR for WMR plugin. And what that means is the WMR platform is going via this plugin to SteamVR to then run the Dirt Rally 2 game. And there's an overhead for doing this. So what we can do with Open Composite is it acts as a translator, I guess, for OpenVR protocol games to open XR games or applications. So we can see in this example here where open composite is being used, it allows Dirt Rally to be translated and appear as an open XR game. And the WMR runtime, which is what the Reverb G2 uses, can access that directly and we're bypassing Steam and WMR altogether. So what Open Composite allows us to do is run open VR games that would otherwise not work because they're not natively written to work with OpenXR so that you can then use them with the OpenXR runtime and therefore use them with the OpenXR toolkit. So in terms of OpenXR applications or games that work currently out of the box, we've got Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and iRacing, both of which that I've tried. When you play iRacing, you'll notice there's two different ways to launch VR games. There's the open VR mode and the open XR mode. So if you want to use the open XR toolkit, you'll need to launch it in the open XR mode. Now, this is a fairly short list of what's been tried on the open XR front. So if we want to try other games with the open XR toolkit, 
this is where we need to use open composite which i mentioned earlier so here's a list of games that have been tested to work with open composite and will allow you to use the open xr toolkit so before we get started the first thing i recommend you download is the open xr tools for windows mixed reality so if you go to the microsoft store and just type open xr it's free and it's an official app by microsoft which allows you to change some of the settings in the open xr runtime then step two once you've done that we want to download the open xr toolkit download the latest which at the time of making this video is version 1.21 and then once downloaded we'll just run the msi and install it so the third and final piece will be to download open composite and this will allow you to play steam vr games without steam vr using the open xr runtime and what we want to do is go to the open composite launcher so we'll just click that get it downloaded so once we've installed the open xr toolkit and we've downloaded open composite.zip we'll just want to unzip open composite.zip and in there we'll have a shortcut to the executable so i've made a shortcut on my desktop here so if you just open this up you'll be able to see that there's a real simple button here which allows you to switch easily between open composite and steam vr so there's two ways of doing this just for reference you can either manually copy the open composite dlls into each of the game folders or you can use this little launcher which takes away a lot of the hassle of doing it manually so all you need to do is whenever you want to use open composite push this button and it'll switch to open composite mode or if you want to go back to native steam vr mode you can push that button there the other handy thing with this is there's a little configure button here and as you click that you can see games that have been launched with the open xr runtime and if you wish to you can quickly switch each app individually back and forth between the two different runtimes so real simple and easy app to use and this will allow you to use games directly with open xr so once we've used open composite and switched it to open xr mode next thing we'll want to do is open the open xr toolkit companion app so i've made a little shortcut for this now with the companion app open it'll give you a bunch of settings you can change key things are you can quickly disable the open xr toolkit if you don't want to use it you can also do it selectively per game that you've run previously uh, but the main thing of interest is the on-screen menu hotkeys so these uh, i believe were originally set to the f keys i've changed it so that they use the arrow keys with the modifier control so in order to navigate the open xr toolkit menu when you're in a game i'll just press control and left arrow to move left on the menu same for up down but as i said by default these are set to the f keys but just keep in mind these are the things that you'll need to remember for navigating the menus so that's it for setup really the only thing we need to do now is launch a game and what we'll do i'll show you a set of calls competition on the quest uh, but it's the same process if you're running this on the reverb g2 we'll just go to steam vr and then run it in steam vr mode so if you press control and down in my case to open the open xr toolkit menu I'll just quickly run through some of the menu items here. So on the first tab, we've got performance. One thing you'll probably want to put on first is the FPS counter. I actually prefer the advanced one so I can see the CPU and GPU frame time breakdown. Next line is the scaling options. So at the moment it's turned off, but we can see we've got the NVIDIA image scaler and AMD's contrast adjusted sharpening option there as well one thing to note if you want to use one of the upscalers you probably want to disable the ones that are used in game uh, so if you see fsr in the game or dlss you'll want to turn them off because you'll be trying to upscale twice and it might be counterproductive if for example we click nis which is the nvidia image scaler you'll see at the bottom there it says restart vr session to apply the changes so pretty much as it says there it's not going to take effect until you restart the game once you enable it so the size option for when you've picked one of the scalers works in two ways the way i like to use it is values below 100 percent so if we set this down to a 50 percent scale by just lowering the value here with the arrow keys this will mean that the application will be rendered at 50 percent of the headset resolution and the upscaler will make the difference up to 100 percent 
And if we set it to 200%, you'll see the resolution on the right is the same as what we had it set to on 50%. So that's another way of saying, right, we want a 200% upscale. Um, so you can use it either way. Personally, I like to have it on the 100% downwards mode, but just be aware if you want to use the upscaler, there's two ways you, you can configure it. Then we've got fixed foveated rendering. That's another thing you'll probably want to put on pretty quickly uh, to get the biggest performance boost. So if we just toggle across the preset, you'll see we've got two modes. We've got a quality mode and a performance mode. So as we toggle between them, we should be able to see the outer edges alter in quality. Uh, so performance will obviously give you the biggest performance improvement and pattern that will adjust the size at which it's blowing out the outer edges. So narrows the, uh, the smallest one bounced is the middle setting and wide is the uh, the widest profile so pretty straightforward there are other options here if you go to custom you can tweak it as you need so turbo mode is a new feature added to version 1.21 i believe it means it'll ignore the frame timings as dictated by openxr uh, the developers made in the uh, release notes a comment saying it's released as is and won't be supported any further and it may cause game crashes so use with caution so you might get a slight performance boost using this but uh, it may also crash the game so just think this is a, as it says there an experimental feature frame throttling is something else you can adjust so in some cases you might get slightly better cpu frame time if you reduce this to be closer in line with your headset's refresh rate record statistics this determines whether it'll log the frame time that we can see in the top right corner to a log file. So if you can go back and look at your performance data. So appearance, if we go to post-processing, we can turn that on. We can make some fine adjustments to the image we see in the headset to do with contrast, brightness, exposure, etc. Inputs, there's a shaking reduction setting here. Not really tried it myself, but it should reduce the amount of twitchiness you get in your headset system this lets you do things such as override the display resolution this is not to be confused with the app resolution that the game will render for upscaling but you do have an option there to change it and then the final tab we've got the menu items so you can increase and reduce the size of the fonts on this menu uh, and bring it closer or move it further away and set the opacity so that's it for the main menu items. Like I say, the main things you'll probably want to try out is the fixed foveated rendering and the upscaling and sharpening. So for this quick demo, I'm going to turn off asynchronous space warp on the Oculus Debug tool, so there's no reprojection. And then the Open XR tools, I've got uh, motion reprojection disabled and the renderer resolution is set to 100, so we should have no adjustment of the headset resolution. In terms of the app, we've got the headset set to 90 hertz and the render resolution turned up all the way to the maximum. Okay, so first off, I'll show you an example of OpenXR Toolkit running for ACC and we're using the Quest 2 just so we can see the image the clearest using Oculus Mirror. I'm going to show you three full screen clips with different settings. So first of all, we'll have the default view which we're looking at now and then we'll take a look at the fixed foveated rendering view so you can see what the edges of the screen look like keep in mind when you've got the headset on and you're sort of looking forward you don't really notice the edges and then last of all we've got fixed foveated rendering with on performance and narrow mode with the NIS scaler set to 85% upscale. Now on the comparison, if you just focus on the app GPU time where the green arrows are, they're the main things that show you the performance difference between the three different settings that I've got here. So default on the left, foveated rendering on performance, narrow mode in the middle, and the same again on the right, but with the NIS scaler set to 85%. As you can see on all three of them, we're not 
hitting the 90 hertz for the Quest 2. However, that's largely because we're CPU bound on all of them pretty much, uh, with the far right one being the most CPU bound. So all we really need to hit is the 11.1 milliseconds on the GPU time to hit the 90 hertz. Anything less than that is great, so we must be CPU bound in this case. Okay, on this second run, we're now on the HP Reverb G2 at native render resolution 90Hz. On the far left, we've got the default setup. In the middle, we've got performance and narrow fixed foveated rendering enabled. And then on the right hand side, we've got the same again, but with the custom epic preset that I configured where I reduced the VR pixel density to 125 and 145. I also reduced the view distance of the mirror down to 40 meters and the opponent visibility down to 16 from 32 and this seems to reduce the CPU load in the game. And with that we're able to hit a pretty steady 90 FPS and have it look really good so that's quite a good experience. So next up we'll look at Auto and Ballista 2 on the Nightmare Night and Rain mode. So I've done a benchmark of this previously using OpenVR on standard Steam VR mode. So this will give you a performance comparison. On the far left we've got it on default mode again. Then we've gone for fixed foveated rendering on performance and balanced. I did find when it is on narrow you can actually see the change in the lighting effect on narrow mode. So balanced expands the, uh, the view size a bit and that looks better to me. However, the performance drop wasn't that great really between, well, the performance improvement, should I say, wasn't that great over default. However, when we enabled the NIS scaler as well as foveated rendering, we had quite a boost in performance. And for the most part, we we're under the 11.1 milliseconds. So when we get to the top of the hill, you can see we're hitting that 90 FPS fairly consistently. So pretty good improvement. If you want to run AMS2, at night in the wet then this will definitely do it obviously if you've got a lower end GPU you might need to increase the NIS scale a bit more or run a lower resolution so keep in mind this is the reverb G2 at native res okay that's it for the open XR toolkit video on how to set it up and a demo on a couple of different games don't forget if you enjoy the video leave a thumbs up any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.